Hi, my name is Teresa Bonapartes, and I'm the co-developer of the Entering Canaan Ministry, a ministry for those who are suffering because of a past abortion. I thought today I'd just share a little meditation on St. Mary Magdalene, whose feast day it is on July 22nd. Many of us who have participated in an abortion can relate to St. Mary Magdalene. She was lost and consumed by her sin, and I imagine filled with many of the same emotions that we experience, shame, guilt, fear, really feeling unforgivable. She couldn't even begin to look at her life until she found the love and, and was encountered by Jesus. When she did encounter Jesus, instead of judgment and condemnation that everyone else had shown her, Jesus, although condemning her sins, offered her love and acceptance and showed her the dignity that she had as a child of God and allowed her to love him with this newfound love. Think about that. Like She really was a place card in his, in his life after that. Um, and he allowed her to be there. He didn't think of her as this terrible sinner that, um, you know, had no hope and couldn't, you know, hope for anything in life. Instead, he accepted her um, and accepted her love of him. So the encounter with Jesus was life-changing for her. Um, she found what she had always been seeking her whole life and what probably maybe even led her into sin. She was looking for love. She was looking for agape love pure love with no motives but to cherish the one loved. Um, it's an amazing story and one that fills us with awe and desire and hope. She has what we're looking for, what so many of us are looking for. Mary's gratitude became uncontrollable. Just think about it, like um, she goes to the house where Jesus is having dinner, the house where all these people had condemned her for so many years, and instead of being afraid, um, without fear, she goes into the house filled with these people and kisses and washes the feet of Jesus. Her heart had been moved beyond her fear to love and console his heart to somehow make up for all of her sins that caused his suffering and to make reparation and share the sufferings out of love for him. It didn't matter to her what anybody else thought anymore. She wanted to love and console Jesus. She knew what Jesus had done for her and nothing mattered anymore but that. That's all she cared about, that she knew the love and the mercy and the forgiveness that he had bestowed upon her and that she wanted to be there for him. She wanted to be able to love him. She wanted to be what he was telling her that she was by his forgiveness and his mercy and the dignity that he showed her. She also followed Jesus to the foot of the cross. When you think about that, as Jesus was crucified, everybody else was afraid, they ran away. Um, but that love that conquers fears, that she didn't care. She was present at this horrific fear with Mary and John, um, sharing in the sorrow and consoling Mary as well, being there for Mary, having the strength to be there. And where did she get this strength? By the mercy and the love and the forgiveness of Jesus. Um, during my struggles in healing, I often, many times, wish that I could ask Mary Magdalene some questions um, about how there was such a drastic change in her so quickly, and it seemed like there was no going back, there was no doubt, there was no um, wondering, am I healed, am I not healed, um, do I have worth, do I not have worth, does he love me, does he not love me. Um, she was just totally converted totally converted um you know I, I i would love to ask him some questions like was she ever afraid that his love wasn't going to be there um did she ever have doubts about her healing um was there a fear there when you stepped out into faith you know was there fear or, or was it that she just didn't even care because of the forgiveness and the mercy that she had experienced in her life um, because of the love of Jesus? Um, how did she get past the judgment of other people? Um, was she afraid that she would lose his love somehow? All these different things when you think about it. Um, 
because I know with us when we go through our healing there's different levels of healing and different processes that we need to go through and different things that come up and yet with her it just seemed like she was just totally converted that there wasn't a minute that she didn't trust and believe in the love of God for her and have it make her um, act totally different when I think about it, I think that her answer would probably simply be that she knew that Jesus loved her. Like there was no doubt in her mind. She felt it in her core and she knew it. That he was in fact love himself. She knew in the depths of her heart what he had done for her. Um, he had given her his love and his mercy and she was freed. Mary's love wasn't unrequited with Jesus. Jesus knew how hard it was for her to love and that the love she showed him was born out of a purity that she had and an unselfishness of his love. Um, he trusted in his love in her. And I think that's probably really key. So many times in our healing, we're still so caught up in ourselves that we can't even comprehend Christ's love. But once we get to the point where we can allow his love in, um, it's a trust in his love in us. And he saw that in her and he encouraged it and valued it. As we go deeper and deeper into our healing process, we're called to trust with the love of the Magdalene. For many of us, although the desire is there, it's difficult to do, and it's only extraordinary grace that allows us to trust so deeply. That same grace that Mary Magdalene had is available to us now. We only have to ask for it. Um, I think that she's just such an example of, of the movement of grace in a life once you've encountered Christ. And we, we put ourselves in the way so many times. We block the grace. We block the things that he so freely is giving us without even intentionally knowing it and, and doing it. And, and I think that we need to be um, conscious that we're doing that and, and just pray for the grace to stay out of his way, to pray for the grace to allow him to heal us, to pray for the grace to love him as he loved us, to pray for the grace to courageously step out in our healing journey and, and let his love be known to other people through our own healing. Um, it's a beautiful grace. Um, Mary Magdalene is just such a beautiful example of, of, of a tremendous sinner transformed totally um, always at the feet of Jesus at the feet of Jesus in the house of Martha um, as he's speaking just listening to him at the feet of Jesus at the house where the dinner was um, washing his feet and drying them with her hair at the feet of Jesus at the foot of the cross humbled knowing her sinfulness knowing her brokenness and knowing that all good things came from him and that he's the way to salvation um, and I just pray that we all um, pray to Mary Magdalene especially on this her feast day and ask her to obtain for us the graces that she so readily allowed into her life so that we too can be Mary Magdalene's to Jesus